Welcome, my fellow couch potatoes, to the wildest ride you never knew you signed up for, Squid Game. This South Korean roller coaster of a show is like the Hunger Games met Saw at a children's birthday party. And they all decided, yeah, let's do this, but make it way more messed up. In case you missed it or just need a refresher, let's dive into the madness of Squid Game Season 1. Episode 1. Red Light, Green Light Meet Seong Gi-hun, our lovable yet perpetually unlucky hero. Picture this. A grown man who can't win a stuffed animal for his daughter at the arcade, and you're pretty much on the money. Gi-hun's life is a mess. He's drowning in debt, living with his mom, and somehow, despite all odds, he still manages to lose at gambling. Cue the mysterious guy in a suit who's totally not shady at all, offering Gi-hun a chance to play some harmless kids' games for a boatload of cash. What could possibly go wrong? Gi-hun, ever the optimist, or just plain desperate, says, why not? Next thing he knows, he's waking up in a jumpsuit, surrounded by 455 other folks who also clearly didn't read the fine print. The first game? Red light, green light. You remember the game where you'd stop moving when the teacher looked at you? Yeah, it's like that, but instead of detention, you get shot by a creepy robot doll. Surprise! Half the contestants are wiped out, and the rest? Well, they just realised they're in way over their heads. Episode 2. Hell after witnessing a massacre that would make even horror movie villains say, too far, man, the remaining players decide, nope, we're out. They vote to end the game and are released back into the real world. But guess what? Real life is still terrible. Gihun's mom is sick, his daughter's about to move to the US, and those loan sharks didn't forget about that kidney he owes them. So what do our brave contestants do? They march right back into the game because, apparently, risking your life in a murder carnival is better than dealing with creditors. Makes sense, right? Episode 3. The Man with the Umbrella. Back in the game. It's time for Dalgona. That's right. They've got to carve out a shape from a brittle sugar candy without breaking it. Easy peasy, right? Wrong. The shapes range from simple to, how did I end up with the umbrella? Looking at you, Gihun, our boy realises the only way to win is to channel his inner dessert chef and start licking that candy like it's a popsicle on a hot day. He barely makes it, and we all learn a valuable lesson. <laughs> when in doubt, lick it out. Episode 4. Stick to the team. Next up is tug of war. Sounds innocent enough until you realise the losing team gets dropped into the abyss. Gihun's team is a bit, shall we say, eclectic? An old man, a pickpocket, and a guy who definitely skipped gym class, but somehow they pull it off thanks to some clever strategy. Remember, kids, it's not about strength, it's about teamwork and sheer unbridled terror. That night, things get spicy when the contestants turn the dormitory into a battle royale. You know it's bad when your best strategy is to sleep with one eye open while clutching a metal pipe. But hey, at least they're bonding. Episode 5. A Fair World As the games continue, the contestants realise two things. One, these games are rigged by some very rich, very bored people. And two, they're all in serious trouble. Meanwhile, a side plot follows Officer Huang Jun-ho, who's sneaking around the game like he's auditioning for the next mission, Impossible Movie. His goal? Find his missing brother, but mostly just not get caught. Episode 6, Ganbu Now, for the most heart-wrenching game, Marbles. The players are paired up, and just when you thought you'd found your game buddy for life, the organisers hit you with the twist. Only one of you is making it out alive. Cue the tears, betrayal, and enough emotional trauma to keep a therapist busy for years. Gihun tricks his elderly partner, O oh Ilnam, who may or may not be the sneakiest old man ever. Meanwhile, Sang Wu proves that trust no one is his new motto by swindling poor Ali. And Ji Yong, bless her heart, decides she's had enough of life and hands the win to Sabiok, solidifying this episode as the ultimate tearjerker. Episode 7. VIPs. Just when you think it can't get any crazier, the VIPs show up. 
These guys are like the worst version of rich and bored, betting on human lives like it's a night at the casino. The next game, Glass Stepping Stones, where one wrong step means you're taking a shortcut to the afterlife. Our players quickly realize this game is less about skill and more about praying that the person in front of you doesn't screw up. Sang Wu, now fully embracing his inner villain, pushes a player to their death just to save his own skin. Nice guy, huh? Episode 8, Frontman. Before we get to the finale, there's a big reveal. The frontman, the guy running the whole show, is none other than Jun Ho's long-lost brother. Plot twist. Jun Ho tries to expose the games, but his brother's like, not on my watch, and gives him the old sibling rivalry treatment, complete with a bullet to the chest. Back at the dorm, Gi Hun tries to keep Sai Byok alive after she's badly injured, but Sang Wu, being Sang Wu, decides to finish her off in the night. So much for friendship, huh? Episode 9. One Lucky Day. Finally, we arrive at the last game, Squid Game. It's Gi Hun versus Sang Wu in a no-holds-barred fight to the finish. And let's be real, it's less of a game and more of a let's see who can out crazy the other match. Gi Hun manages to overpower Sang Wu, but refuses to kill him because deep down, he's still a good guy. But Sang Wu, not so much. Rather than admit defeat, he decides to take himself out of the game permanently, leaving Gi Hun the sole survivor. Gi Hun wins the prize money, but at what cost? He returns home only to find that his mother has passed away, leaving him alone with his trauma and a whole lot of cash he doesn't know what to do with. Conclusion. One year later, Gi Hun is still a hot mess, despite his newfound wealth. But when he discovers that the games are still going on, he decides to do something about it. And just like that, we're left with a cliffhanger that practically screams, Season 2, anyone? <laughs>